Welcome to another PumaScan product demonstration. This is Principal Security Engineer, Eric Johnson. And today what I want to show you is how to run the PumaScan Professional Server Edition from the command line. Now I've already installed the server edition following the instructions that are located out on pumascan.com support. You can click the installation link and go through those server installation steps which involve downloading your license and downloading the installer package and then executing the installer along with installing some prerequisites. And that's all documented for you on the site. So assuming that you've done that, what you're looking at now is I've got a PowerShell window open and I've changed the directory to TCTFS build agent externals PumaScan Pro. This is just where I have installed the PumaScan Pro server edition package on a build server. So if I go ahead and run pumascan.exe and pass in the help switch, which is just dash dash help, you'll see that I've actually got some options here. Now the help menu is very basic. It says that you have to give it a project, tell it which format you want for the output, where to output the actual files to, and give it the path to your settings file. Those are the four required steps that you need to do. So let's go ahead and run a scan here. So I'll go ahead and type in pumascan.exe and do the dash p switch first. So I pasted in a path to our Puma Prey solution file. And what we've got here is next up is the format. So we add the dash F switch and you can give it a comma delimited list of format options. So I can say I would like JSON, MS build, and let's add HTML in there as well in the actual executable will then generate all three output files for you. I can also give it a dash O, which is the output directory. I'm just going to write this into the downloads folder into a set of files called Puma Prey. Now don't worry about an extension here. The extension will automatically be added for you based on which formats you selected with the dash F switch. Next up is where is our settings file that defines all of the custom scan settings for Puma Scan Pro. And that's in the current directory. So we're just going to type in settings and hit tab and that will autofill our settings.json file. Those are the four required switches to running the professional edition from the command line. I'll go ahead and hit enter here and we'll notice Puma Scan Pro's server edition picks up the solution file. It will go ahead and on the fly take your solution and we've got a couple of build warnings which is not abnormal. I'm sure all of you have lots of build warnings that show up when you build your solutions. Those will output to the console and then you can see we found five different projects, roughly 110 documents in the solution and it's now running the analysis against the solution file. takes about 15 seconds to scan the Puma Prey solution. Now that number will vary based on how large your solution is. We've seen scan times in the five minute to 20 minute, two hour long range. In some cases, if you've got hundreds and hundreds of projects and roughly 750,000 lines of code, that does take some time to do a full data flow analysis against. So you can again use your settings file and some of those configuration options that we've got on the site to maybe fine tune the scanner, turn your data flow engine off if you need to really speed things up. When the scan is complete, you'll see that the console has told us, here's our scan summary. We found 21 different diagnostics in the solution and those results were written to a JSON, MS build, and HTML file. Now in a previous module, I showed you what the HTML report looked like. So if you'd like to see that, go ahead and watch the Puma Scan Pro end user demo on generating a report. In this demo, 
We'll take a peek at the JSON and MS build files because these are the formats you will commonly use in your build systems to maybe automate importing these into some other vulnerability management system. So the JSON format is pretty basic. You can see a lot of the data that we generate our HTML report from is logically organized here in a findings array where you've got an ID such as sec001 which has a category, the very high level message and the description and the URL that goes out to our documentation site along with the severity that you configured. And then each instance has the actual code level data such as the project ID, the project the issue is found in, the project name, the file path, and then the line start in number and the sync, which is the actual piece of code that this was discovered in. So you can use a tool like JQ and easily query the JSON file and maybe do some post-processing to import these into some other system or make some intelligent decisions on whether your build should maybe pass versus become unhealthy or even potentially fail if something really bad shows up in the scan. Similarly, the MS build option is very similar except this is formatted in an MS build format that is parsable by tools geared towards looking at Microsoft's standard MS build files. Jenkins, for example, has an MS build plugin that you can install and then you can post process this MS build file and it will actually parse out all of the warnings and pull them into the standard Jenkins code health dashboard for you. So the various formats are very useful in the different CI CD build systems. It's up to you to decide which one you would want to use and how you would like to automate this. So this wraps up our demonstration on running the PumaScan Pro Server Edition's command line interface from PowerShell.